。半导体产业在二零二四年写下了好成绩，展望二零二五年续航力到底如何？今天的关键对话特别邀请到了台积电上游重要的材料供应商德国大厂默克来剖析未来的趋势。默克执行长 Kai Beckman 看好了 AI 持续发展绝非泡沫，而半导体先进之城将会进入新材料时代。关键时刻掌握关键对话，大家好，我是志杰。台积电即将要在二零二五年量产二纳米了，而你知道二纳米到底有多小吗？相当于病毒体积的五十分之一。台湾的科技可以做出这么小的晶片，真的很让人赞叹。而要做出这么精细的结构，半导体材料的角色就变得更加吃重了。我们今天就为您邀请到的是台积电重要的上游材料供应商德国大厂默克，要来讨论的包括有 AI、川普风险。以及明年的景气，欢迎默克电子科技事业体执行长 Dr. Kai Beckman. Hello, Kai. Nice to meet you. Good to see you again, Jinja. Great to be on on your show. And hello, everybody. Let's talk about AI. You said we are in a golden decade of semiconductor industry, and the driving force is AI. However, according to the Economist, it said. The days many are for AI might be the biggest gamble in business history. Do you worry about potential bubbles? I don't even think AI is a is a bubble. For AI, it will be growing as a technology being adopted. The valuation of the companies may change over time, but the technology will continue to grow. Yeah, for the、um, underlying technology underneath AI, the semiconductor technology that will continue to to flourish and to grow. I think we came over six decades to、um, accomplish half a trillion dollars market value. And、uh, the projection is that within the next few years, till the end of this decade, we will double that size to one trillion. So that is the basis for the semiconductor industry covering many different areas. AI, of course, being the growth driver for the semiconductor industry over the next couple of years. I think there's no doubt about the、um, opportunity that AI creates for many industries, like our industry as well, in the materials、uh, industry. That AI can can drive innovation in 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 many areas. There's no doubt about that, and this will continue. In the realm of semiconductor materials, have you seen any benefit, any advancement that brought by generative AI? Yeah, to identify novel materials、uh, for for companies like like Merck、um, is of course a quite an effort. It's quite quite a tough effort to identify、uh, out of these millions or billions of combinations of different materials what is the right material that solves the problem、um, that our our customers have. And AI helps us to much better target、um, our R and D. So I can give you a,、uh, give you an example. So in in the past、uh, when we had、uh, used a hundred experiments. Experiments to identify one material. Now, 99 of these 100、um, experiments can be replaced by machine learning and the adoption of artificial intelligence. And then we can have the one experiment that leads to、um, the right material that we do in real. Oh, so it reduces your R&D time. It will help to speed up R&D and to focus R&D on successful experiments rather than on unsuccessful experiments. What about the See, is AI right all the time? Of course not, but、uh, AI is more right than wrong. I believe the advancement of AI depends heavily on material and process innovation. So, with the technology, with the advanced process, shrink into two nanometer and even below. Can you explain to our audience why material become more vital? You need for、um, advancing semiconductors、uh, to the next levels. You need more sophisticated materials. You are、uh, reaching the boundaries of physics、uh, in certain areas. Structure sizes get so small that is very hard、uh, to find the next best material that helps you to solve these these challenges. And、uh, where. Only materials can enable these smaller structure sizes、uh, for our customers. That's the, what they call the age of materials. Materials help you to to enable、uh, the next level of shrink.、Um, uh, in the past, it was primarily driven by lithography, by by patterning. Now it is more and more driven by novel material、um, uh, properties, and this is where materials help you to enable these next levels and, of course, to speed up semiconductor innovation. And that value contribution. Is increasing. There's another dimension to that,、uh, which is called heterogeneous integration. So it's not just one chip or one chiplet. Now we talk about the composition of several chiplets that, in the end,、uh, drive the value of the device, the system being produced by our by our customers. 
and that next level of sophistication is called heterogeneous integration of, of chiplets, and again, enabled by materials properties. Oh, so the market is bigger and bigger right now. It's more exciting as we go forward, absolutely. What is your outlook on semiconductor industry overall and semiconductor materials in 2025? Yeah, we're still in a situation where we call it a gradual recovery of the market, mainly driven in 2024 by AI and the needs of AI that has driven the, the growth in 2024. And a part of that will continue into 2025, while, of course, the capacity limits are being reached. Still, that will happen. And other areas of the industry will start, will start growing uh, as well, again, that have been more more, more, more slow in growth in 2024. But overall, you still have to imagine the market uh, wants to double toward, towards the end of the decade. Uh, that needs a lot of growth still between now and 2030. So we increased our midterm guidance uh, from 3 to 6 percent to now uh, 5 to 9 percent, which shows our increased confidence in the future growth as well as, of course, the higher contribution of the fast-growing semiconductor-related technologies, as well as uh, our specific outperformance. I think 2025 will be still um, a part of the gradual recovery. It means the, the peak will come after 2025, since the full market did not yet recover uh, as of now. You seem quite optimistic for the future. However, the founder of TSMC, Morris Tran, he declared that globalization is dead and with Trump presidency might even make the situation more severe. So as a supply chain, how can you react to this? What kind of strategies you can take? How can I not agree with Morris Chang? So um, there is uh, you no. Know, we declared already uh, 2018 when we when we did a full refresh of our, our strategy that the approach to the industry is more what we call local for local. So we started already to anticipate a bit of I, I wouldn't call it deglobalization. I would just say local resilience. And we have worked on this local resilience now for the past six years, building capacity closer to our customers within the different regions we operate. And this made it then possible for us to be a bit more, to be, be a bit more immune against these logistics challenges and geopolitical complexities that we had in the past. So I need to build more plants in different countries. How can you overcome the challenges like the cost and talent acquisition? Yeah, you are right. You have to build more capacity uh, locally, which of course uh, is for resilience purposes, but for speed as well. Our customers want us to be next door uh, in every region. Um, and you're absolutely right. It's a challenge, of course, for from a capital expenditure point of view, as well as from a talent point of view. But to have a global footprint is in the genes of our company since its uh, uh, yeah, early beginnings. So we, uh, our company is around now for 356 years. Merck has been founded uh, in 1668 and has started to, to globalize uh, already very early in the, in, the, in the 19th century. And to build a global team with very strong uh, uh, capabilities within each of the regions we operate was always uh, our mission. And it has been proven quite successful over the past years and a good basis for further localization as we now go forward in the semiconductor industry. So likewise, Taiwanese material companies should have the same ability if they want to expand their global business, right? Yeah, I don't claim to have the best solution for a global expansion, but our, our model has been proven very successful in the past to build a lot on strong local talent um, in the regions we operate uh, to help to develop the next generation of leaders uh, in the regions we operate. And for example, in Taiwan, we do a lot for STEM educations. We invest a lot for, for building our local team. The local team already has, has, has re uh, reached 1,124 individuals supporting Merck on the way forward. Thank you, Kai. 根据 Dr. Kai 刚刚的分享呢，他从供应链的角度观察到，这个半导体的市场在未来将会翻倍成长，而且他认为呢，在明年还不是高点，明年还是在复苏期而已，所以他对市况是相当乐观的。他的乐观理由基于 AI 真的有带来实际的改变。以材料科技的研发来讲呢 ，AI 已经帮助默克快速的找出关键的原材料，所以他们认为 AI 的商机是可长可久。以上资讯就提供给大家了，关键对话。
，我是志杰，我们下次见，拜拜。